Howdy folks, Brian Cusco here at Triple B. Why am I speaking into a microphone today? Why am I sitting down? Why am I not standing up? Why, why? These are lots of questions. I'm sorry, I don't have answers. You want answers? Wait till the end of the video. Today our guest is Mr. Jim Sherman. He was speaking at the Herpeton thing. This is the next installment of the Herpeton Talks that we will be continuing throughout the year. And Jim is going to give a talk on ficus in vivaria. So pretty interesting and really cool stuff. And if you're looking at doing naturalistic ter terrariums or vivariums, then I mean, this is definitely the episode for you. You watching Triple B CV. If you saw the picture that Alan put in for my photo in the brochure or the internet, just to know that's what I look like when I was on a strict diet of Alan's superfoods. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna speak on uh, various species of ficus for vivariums. And I'd like to talk first about ficus in general. There's about 850 species, some believe up to 1,000. Um, they're extremely important to tropical, especially in tropical uh, areas. Uh, the edible fig, ficus carica, is it goes back at least 11,000 years from a dig in Jericho, Israel. Um, in tropical forests, there's so many species of ficus, like in Borneo, there's like over 60 species. There always is at least one or more species fruiting at any time, um, and uh, they're very sig significant for birds, mammals, and insects. Uh, one study on chimpanzees showed a diet is m at least half ficus species. Each species of fig has a species-specific pollinator wasp, and um, they actually go in either through the end of the, of the fig, or they actually use their stingers, and they go right through the side of the fig into the fig. And you can see photos where there's like a dozen of these wasps going in to sting them. And um, when I say sting, they, they put their ovipositor in, lay eggs, the larva um, hatch, and the fig flowers, are actually inside the fruit, which is actually not a fruit, it's a conium. And it holds the flowers. The maggots go around, they pollinate, and then they pupate and go out of the fig and they start the next cycle, which is unique to figs. They all produce latex, latex if they're injured. So for large species, it can be a problem because latex can be, um, it can be, um, uh, it can be actually slightly poisonous, but not too bad. Um, Many figs start off as epiphytes. They grow up in the branches of trees. They germinate. They grow. They send roots straight down. Then they'll send another root, another root, and they completely enclose a tree and basically strangle it to death. And that's where you get strangler figs. Um, the weep, uh, Ficus benjamina, the weeping fig, is by far the most common in Bivaria. Uh, one of the problems with it, however, is that it's very dense, so you have to trim it out and make sure it's open enough for different species to be in. Um, and then there's also species of creeping figs, ficus pumila, ficus um, panama, and different species. And they're very nice as aesthetic function, but if you have too many of them, or they, they get too, um, they cover too much of the vivaria, uh, as soon as you throw crickets in to feed your lizards, they'll go right underneath and be, and be gone. Uh, there's a sample of the white latex you see in the center of that photo. Uh, this is another species of, uh, actually another genus as well in the family Moraceae, which includes figs, the Dorstinia, and this is basically like an open fig, uh, an open fig, and the little white spots you see there are the seeds which actually shoot out from the plant. The best way to grow figs is not to plant them directly into the, into the Bavaria, but to put them in containers and then do a bonsai method where you remove them periodically trim the roots back, add a little bit of soil in the bottom of the container, and then plant them back in. Uh, you definitely don't want the roots to take over the vivaria because they can be quite, um, um, they can be quite uh, damaging if they get too large. Um, as far as soil, the best soil is something that uh, drains well but can retain some moisture. Uh, what I use in my nursery, and I think it would work very well in vivaria, it does work in vivaria, it's about 65% perlite, horticulture grade, not too small, and 35% peat moss, and that seems to be really good. As far as fertilizing, any balanced fertilizer with miners is fine. Um, look at the moderate rate of fertilizer on the bag, and you wanna go about half rate and about half as often. You don't want them to grow too fast. 
uh, light is extremely important. Uh, fluorescent lights, LED lights are very good. And you um, want to have at least two LED strips over the vivarium, uh, enough to cover the area outside of the basking lights. Uh, very important, don't put them too close to heat lamps. They will burn. Uh, better to use wood for basking for the animals and keep the, um, the figs a little bit away. And uh, again, pruning where they can take over the vivarium. So here's a good example, just a, like a little box from, uh, a plastic box from Home Depot. Put some holes and then you want to bury it into the vivaria. There's a side sample. Uh, this is an example of a fig getting too close to the heat source and burning. Um, here's another, another thing which is very, uh, very interesting called kokedama. And it's a method of growing plants where you put, basically you put the plant into a soil mass, then you wrap um, the moss around it, and then you can uh, tie it with some waxy thread like a dental floss. And they can be also be put on hydroponic clay pallets. And you can also stack them and create some very interesting growth. And they tend to naturally bonsai if you do kokodama. Here's uh, an example with ficus benjamina. Here's an um, example. This is with the uh, Ruth Bancroft, which works very well. This is a great fig, by the way. It's a cross between ficus carica, the edible fig that we have, and ficus cumula, a creeping fig. And it um, does not lose its leaves and is very vigorous. This is just a Sansevieria showing how it's done in Kokodama as well. Um, here is a Morton Bay fig. And if you're not from San Diego and you have the time, you should see how big these are. They, uh, there's one behind the Natural History Museum in San Diego. It's probably at least 130 feet wide. But it works very well in vivarium. And if you do the bonsai technique, the leaves reduce, the plants stay small, and they're beautiful and very functional. Another group of figs are the South African super figs. It's a species complex with Ficus burkii, Thuringii, Davii, and Natalensis, which is my favorite of the bunch. Uh, and they do tend to send aerial roots. They're very hardy, and they do great in vivaria. They're also great. They have a low branching. Uh, they, dent, they branch very low, so they, as well as high, and so they create a great environment for a lot of species. Ficus benjamina, here's a waxy monkey tree frog having a good time. Here is uh, some more. They're just, you know, they're very comfortable. Um, here's a Burton's racer, uh, blue barons with ficus. Uh, yeah, it's probably, you know, I can't identify it, the Mingii complex. Um, again, uh, here's an Anolis. So these are, great, these are great branches for things. And, and the Thamingi com complex has, and Morton Bay figs have thick enough stems that you can have certain snakes uh, in with certain snakes in Vivaria. Uh, Bert Davii, one of the Thamingi complex species. Uh, here's a great fig. This is Ficus oblica, which is also very uh, related to the Morton Bay fig, and it, it actually works out very well. And so just reviewing the tree species, Morton Bay figs are very good. Ficus oblica, which is found in Australia and New Caledonia, is also very good. And uh, some others which are rare, but I'm working on propagating these. Ficus habrophila from New Caledonia. Um, it is challenging to propagate, but it's well worth it. And interestingly, the fruit, which normally you cannot, it's, uh, unfertilized ficus fruit is usually not er uh, edible except for certain strains of ficus carica. But I've actually had some large fruit form on this, and it was not pollinated. But it looked soft, it looked good, and I tried it. And it wasn't bad. So I think it's something that could be used as a food for, um, especially for geckos and things. Here's a Morton Bay fig showing the, the adventitious roots that come down and uh, come down to the ground. They make um, amazing displays. And they will do that in a vivarium, too, um, with enough humidity. Here's a Boyd's dragon uh, with a Morton Bay fig. Here's a, a pair of uh, carpet pythons. Again, a Morton Bay fig. At the base, you can see, if you look right here, that's Ficus Panama. And again, this is one of those small figs that's beautiful, aesthetically pleasing, but you don't want to take over the whole uh, vivarium. Or if you throw crickets in, they're going to disappear right away. Uh, here's uh, the Ficus habrophila from New Caledonia. Again, challenging, but we're starting to propagate those. 
Um, and then the rock figs, which are one of my favorites. Uh, these are desert adapted figs, but they still need water. All figs have to have plenty of water. Not to drown them, but they need to keep, be kept moist. So for these, um, the two, um, okay, the rock figs are found in, uh, they grow in rocks. They can actually break rocks apart. They're called rock breakers also. Um, and they have very aggressive roots. Um, again, do the bonsai technique, keep in a small pot. Uh, the two Mexican rock figs, which are amazing plants, some of the most beautiful figs, I think, in the world, are Ficus palmare from Baja California and Ficus pediolaris from mainland Sonora, Mexico, and it grows along the west coast in several states. This is Ficus palmare. The base trunk there is natural. It's not, it just grows like that. This is Ficus pediolaris. Beautiful. And... Uh, these both can lose leaves, either go semi or totally deciduous during cold times. That's just the way they are, but they come right back. So if you get these and you think they're dead, they're not dead, they'll come back. They're very hardy. Uh, some other types, Ficus astrocaledonica for New Caledonia. Um, starting to get some numbers on those. And those have a, a green, almost metallic green leaf. They're unique, um, a very unique leaf. Uh, Ficus menabiensis, this is one we're starting to get some numbers on. From Madagascar, like everything from Madagascar, it's got something a little unique. And these are bluish in the leaf. And you'll see it, but you can't appreciate it from the photo as much. And then Ficus Ruth Bancroft. This is also a, a very nice, vigorous one. That's the one I mentioned is a hybrid. So this is, um, this is a Ficus astrocaledonica. It's a little on the yellow side right now because it went through winter and it kind of yellowed, but it's greening up. Uh, very, it's very nice and a very nice form for a lot of... Uh, a lot of herbs. Um, there's a small one, and then the tall stem that you see, um, hang on a second, that you see going up and down here like that, that's, uh, those are what? Oh yeah, they're obliquus. Um, those are uh, very nice for the animals. Okay, this is one of the only pictures on the internet of Ficus menabiensis, they're that rare. Uh, growing out of a rock, in Madagascar, and they grow all over the, the arid parts of Madagascar. And then to the right, you can see some plants I've been growing, and they're starting to get the blue color in, and uh, they're really an amazing plant. Here's Ruth Bancroft, it grows like a, um, this one is a little more upright, looks like a, almost like cross between a tree and a shrub, but they tend to be more scramblers, they wander and meander is their natural way to go. So, for the creeping species, they're very decorative, but they can hide food, and um, if they get too, too, if they spread out too much. The three species that are probably the best are Ficus pumila, Ficus quercifolia, and Ficus panama. This is Ficus, um, this is the Ficus pumila, which is quite common. You can buy them at any nursery locally here. Uh, beautiful, uh, they can get invasive, and they work very well. There's um, there's Pumala in the, in the uh, hang on a second, Pumala right here, um, and some various plants in a very nice artistic display. Uh, this is Ficus quercifolia, which arguably has the smallest leaf of any ficus. You can see the comparisons. Uh, beautiful plant, makes a wonderful carpet on the floor of a vivarium. Uh, this is Ficus pumila, and, uh, uh, not Ficus pumila, Ficus panama, and it is a wonderful fig. Again, we're starting to get some numbers on these, and they work very well in vivarium. This is kind of the carpet of, you would see in a vivarium if it uh, completely took over. And they're quite aggressive. Here's one uh, that's, uh, I think that's a, a close-up of another picture showing how it is and just part of a vivarium. Okay, so in conclusion, the species, um, and they're quite hardy. They're among the hardiest species. Ficus for vivarium. Uh, the creeping ones, again, have a great ornamental value, but not such a good uh, utilitarian value. And I hope this has helped. Uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. So great talk by Jim. Thank you for that, sir. Next week is going to begin the Pomono Reptile Super Show, which we are attending and we'll be doing interviews. And I believe our first interviewee is going to be Mr. JT Tomlinson. And if you want to tune in for that, well, you can tune in next week. And until then, you've been watching Triple B TV.
like to have your questions answered by Jim or anybody else at the Herpeton thing, you should show up next year because it's already scheduled. There will be a link in the description where you can find that. See you later. Bye. Testing for peaking data. Supposedly, I can't make this thing peak out. Supposedly, supposedly, supposedly. We're testing it out right now. Supposedly, there's a limiter, but I don't know if it's limiting. Maybe it isn't. Maybe it is. I don't really know.